Dei Onnipotente, Beato Maria, Sempre Vergini, Beato Michaeli, Arcangelo, Beato Giovanni Battista, Santi Apostoli, Piet, Petro et Paolo, Omnibus Sanctis et Vobis Fratres, qui a peccave, nimis facitationum, verbo et opere, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, ideo preco, Beata Maria, Sempre Virginem, Beato, well, that's not the priest from Rome, surely. I should say it is. Hmm. I suppose I'm the missionary type myself. I've always wanted to go to South America. To be one of Father Hartman's revolutionaries overthrowing the government? You've heard. What sort of thing does he teach in those classes of his? Well, he believes that the church is now the perfect structure through which social revolution can be brought into certain underdeveloped areas of the world, and he shows how it can be done. Tell me, does he talk much about God? In what way do you mean? Oh, I don't know, forget it. No, go on, please. Well, what I mean is, is it souls he's after, or is it the good of mankind? I would say the second. I got it as much. Well, of course, I'm not much up on those things. I was never one for the missionary impulse myself. But your seal for the old mass, your continuance of the Latin ritual here, surely that could be interpreted as missionary spirit? It's this plainness in those on your face. I mean, we, we did up the start of all this. We've been going over to the mainland and saying mass every Sunday, the way we always did. In Latin. The way we were brought up to say it. With the, the priest and the people facing the altar. You see, not fa facing God, you could say, but there's the priest changing the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. The way Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper, this is my body, this is my blood, do ye this in commemoration of me. You see, God sent his son on this earth and he died for us, he died for our sins. And that's what the Mass is all about, you see. I mean, it's just that, a commemoration of his death. And it was always in Latin. Because Latin is the language of the church, and the church is universal. I mean, if a, a fella could drop into a church anywhere in the world, anywhere, and hear the very self same mass, the Latin mass, the only mass there ever was, you see. Anyway, that's the way we've been doing it for the past 2,000 years. It's, well, just on 2,000 years. Oh, it's a mystery. Of course it's a mystery. But, I mean, well, what you're giving us now, there's no mystery about that at all. I mean, it's only a mockery as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some, because you're not talking to a magic God. You're talking, you're talking to your neighbor, and that's why it's in English. Or German, or Chinese, or whatever, well, whatever kind of language you want to use in the church. <laughs> it's an entertainment, that's all. And, of course, the people see through us. Of course they do. And that's what has them coming here to Coombe Mountain. If you could only see those people, bareheaded, with the rain pelting off their faces, when they see that piece of bread that becomes the body and blood of Christ, through the mystery and the miracle of the Mass. And you wouldn't want to sweep all that away, would you? You wouldn't. To put in its place what? Well, what you had put in this place, all this guitar playing and, and singing and, and uh, <laughs> turning around and touching your neighbor and all that sort of pathology. Uh, for no other reason than to bring people into the church the way we used to bring them into the parish hall for a game of bingo. <laughs> I know. Hmm. I wish I had all that conviction, Ernest. You see, we have a lot of sermons Yes, but I see what, I, what I'm saying. I mean, it, it's the God's truth. The abbot will bear me out. I don't know what God's truth is, do any of us. If we did, there'd be no arguments between us. <laughs> but what if you have a case of heresy on your hands? As the general's man, you have the power to act against us, don't you? Oh, look, this is the end of the 20th century, not the beginning of the 13th. I mean, how can we even define a case of heresy today? I'll define this one for you. 
Yesterday's orthodoxy is today's heresy. But Father Abbott, we're merely trying to create a uniform posture within the church. If everybody decides to worship in his own way, obviously that will create disunity. Did you know Ireland was the only country in the world where once upon a time every Catholic went to Mass of a Sunday? Everyone. Even the men. That's impressive. <laughs> Until the time of Pope John, that was, when the new Mass came in. Well, we were like everybody else. We obeyed orders, went over to the mainland and said the new Mass in English. And the people stopped coming to church. Oh, some women. But the men and the boys stood outside smoking. So I was worried. I said to the monks, what on earth are we doing if we cannot persuade the people to come back into the church? It's the priest's job to keep their faith in Almighty God, and I don't want to tamper with their faith. So I decided we'd go back and say the old mass in the old way, and well, that's the whole story.